is up there everybody, Citrus Aviation here for yet another video and today we have two very unique models to take a look at today because these are the very first ever mold samples I have ever reviewed. So in today's video I'm going to show you what a mold sample is, what the purpose of it is, and I'm going to give you my personal take on these two mold samples. Today we have the NG models Boeing 737 MAX 8 and Boeing 737 MAX 9 mold samples and we're going to take a look at them. We have quite a few unique models that are coming through the studio here, and these are the first two that you're going to see. You can see another one in the background there, that's an interactive 777. And then there's the box for a custom Boeing 767 in the back as well, so stay tuned for those videos as well. But we are looking at the custom NG models 737 MAX 8 mold samples. These are the second run of mold samples. You may have seen yesterday's airline's very first mold samples. At the time this video comes out, the very first MAX 8, which is the Southwest Death of Gold Retro has come out to retail since many of you might have them in your collection at this point. However, today I'm going to show you what a mold sample looks like, what the purpose of it is, and I'm going to give my thoughts on it. So let's get started here. What is a mold sample? Why do these exist? When a model aircraft manufacturer, or really any die cast manufacturer, is going to be producing a new mold, it's a very, very expensive endeavor. For something like this, it's probably going to be about $50,000 per mold, maybe a little bit less because they're doing two that are very similar. So maybe let's call it $30,000 for each mold, so $60,000 total for the Max 8 and the Max 9. Each individual piece has to have its own separate mold casting produced, and then they have to make sure the fitment is good, the details are correct, and that is what these mold samples are for. So once they've created a rough idea of how they want to manufacture and tool the mold, they will produce a mold sample using that initial tooling. And then that is how this gets produced, this mold sample here. So they produce this and these are usually made for internal use. So they'll produce them and they'll take a look at them internally and compare them to how they wanted it to look. And then with that being said, they'll take a look at it and determine how good it is. Now I received these mold samples as I'm going to be reviewing them and giving NG models my feedback in this video as mold samples that they sent me to take a close look at and that's what I'm going to do today. And from the feedback they receive, both from internal and external sources, they put that into the production versions. So these versions are probably very close to what the production versions will actually look like. So let's take a look at them and then we'll also compare it to the Gemini Jets mold, which is basically the industry standard, although I suspect this one will become the new industry standard. The Boeing 737 MAX is Boeing's current generation airliner that they are producing. There are currently two versions in production, the Boeing 737 MAX 8 and the MAX 9, with the smaller MAX 7 and even longer MAX 10 to be certified in the not too distant future, most likely in 2024. However, as that time is still a ways out, NG models is going to just produce the MAX 8 and the MAX 9. These aircraft fill the market as the mainline airliner used for most mid-range to smaller markets that seek somewhere between 140 to 190 customers with there even being a MAX 8 200 variant which is an ultra high density version that can seat 200. They are very popular, used by many airlines all around the world, particularly here in North America they are very popular but many airlines all around the world use them. So this is the mold sample right here by NG Models. You can get a good look at it. It is a very solid and interesting take on the Max 8. Once again, NG Models has produced this model in quite a bit of detail. This mold sample is actually a full metal sample. Not all the samples that you'll see that are mold samples are metal. Sometimes they're made out of resin because resin samples are much, much less expensive to produce. But this one is basically what the production version of this model will look like. And so it's a good look at what it'll actually look like. So let's take a look at it in closer detail and then compare it to some pictures of the actual Boeing 737 MAX. Starting with the front, we have the classic Boeing 737 MAX nose there. It is very similar to the 737 NG and as you can see here, NG Models has done a nice job modeling it. I do like the extra detail of the cockpit windows being higher than the actual passenger windows there. That is a realistic feature of this actual aircraft. Very nice job there. The doy detail looks excellent for the R1 doy. We're going to move down. You can see there's a crease here between the cabin and the cargo area. This is realistic for the actual Boeing 737 and most Boeing aircraft actually have this where it's a bit of a crease. This is used for structural bracing as well as to separate the passenger compartment from the cargo compartment. So really nice job that NG Models does that. They're one of the only manufacturers in 400 scale that does that. You can sort of see that crease there. Really nice detail there. 
Then here we have the mold for the engines. These are the Update Pratt & Whitney Leap engines and there's also a CFM valves in these that are available as well. So here we have the solid core engines and there are two types of cores that are used for engines with molds. There's a solid core and a hollow core. A hollow core allows you to see through the fan blades, which is really cool. But a hollow core has the benefit of being able to have the accurate number of fan blades, which is what NG models decide to do in this example. And I'm very happy to see that they did that here with the Max 8. The engine from the side looks really, really nice as well. I like how it is nice and level to the ground and of course, the engine kind of looks like the top of it kind of curves up a little bit. So that is nice to see there. Pylon detail looks good. Sephiron detail also looks really nice, although it could be a little bit more pointed at the end. It feels slightly a little bit soft there on the edge, but overall pretty good. Wing detail looks to be excellent on this mold once again. As you can see, very similar to a 737. And then this is where we get to the axle windlets. Uh, now the winglet for 737 Max is slightly different from an NG. It's a two-piece winglet with the top part and the bottom part. They're both at a different angle. And you can see just modeled there, there's a bit of a center portion of the winglet, which is in line, which is at a 90 degree perpendicular angle to the wing. You can see there it's a little bit flat and extends out there just a little bit at the back. That's nice to see. That's a really nice detail the Axel 737 Max winglet has, and it's cool to see the NG shows that. So cool to see that there. You see the back of the aircraft here? With the tail scraper right there, you can see that detail is nice and sound. You can see a lot of detail isn't still printed on this. Once again, as this is a pre-production sample, it's just testing a sample, not necessarily print quality. So that's why you just see the door and the windows painted. There's no cargo bin doors, there's no beacon lights, there's no antennas, nothing like that. You can see though, you do get a good idea of what the window alignment is going to look like. And it does look to be accurate to the Boeing 737 MAX 8, so I'm very happy to see that. We also do though have the mold that most people have still not seen yet, which is the 737 MAX 9. Now this is the larger brother. This is gonna be the higher capacity aircraft, usually somewhere between 170 to 200 pastels for one of these. You can see it's a little bit longer than the MAX 8. You can see the engines there. It's basically the same. You can see though there is the emergency exit at the back, which is an extra emergency exit door required by law. It's basically a slightly extended version and this is what that mold looks like. Taking a look at the cradle, we can see where the antenna is going to go up here on top and then the SATCOM box. And then on the bottom side, you can see where the antenna on the bottom side is going to go. I should mention another factor that should be considered is the fact that these models will have no stand hold. Now, I do realize that a lot of people like the stand holes, including myself, but NG Models is justifying this by the fact that most people with their 737s will just put them on a tarmac display of some kind which I can understand that, but I would have liked to have seen a stand hole here of some kind. I do have one complaint with these, and that is for both of these. It does appear as if the nose gear is a little bit too low. So the 737 Max, one of the things that makes it unique is that the gears are a bit taller. That is required to be able to fit the larger engines on it. These, you can see they sit fairly low, and I'm gonna get you a comparison between 737NG and a Gemini Jets Max to show you what I'm talking about. Here, you can see on the left side is one of NG model's very own 737s. This is the United Star Alliance 737-700. And then you can see the Max 9 mold on the right. You can see these gears are at identical heights. This is not accurate for the Boeing 737 Max, as the Max is actually a little bit taller by about a foot taller in reality than the 737NG. This is in comparison to this here, Gemini Jets Southwest Boeing 737 Max 8 that is in fact higher up. You can see the little difference there. The mold does sit higher up as the Axle 737NG does. So hopefully NG Models fixes this issue and increases the height for the 737 Max mold because that would make the mold outstanding. That's really the only thing that's missing. As I think the gears are too short. Something I did want to mention between NG models and the competition, which NG gets correct, is the leveling of the engines. This is that same Southwest Max 8 on the left. You can see the engine is pointed up a little bit. This is a QC issue that Gemini Jess has had for quite some time. They refuse to fix. And then you can see the NG Max 9 on the right. You can see the engine is level, like how it should be. And so that is something that if you buy the NG version that you can expect to get that the Gemini Jets 1 won't do. The Gemini Jets 1 won't be 
accurate in terms of the engine leveling with the NG1 wheel. So that's a really nice detail the NG models is doing. In addition, the NG engine is actually larger than the General Jet 1. You can see the General Jet engine is not that much bigger than a 737 NG, whereas the Max mold engine is noticeably larger and therefore much more accurate to the Axel 737 Max, which has a much larger engine, one of those high bypass engines. The high bypass engines have a couple of benefits, the first off being that it is more fuel efficient and the second one being that it is actually quieter. So it results in the cabin being quieter when you fly in it, which is really nice. Another detail I wanted to point out here on the tail section of each mold, you can see the General Jet 1 on the left and the NG version on the right. For whatever reason, the NG1 is a bit taller up here. I'm not sure why that is. It might be due to the fact that the nose gear is too short and the main gear is the correct height, which results in the aircraft wanting to point down a little bit, which results in the tail being up at a higher position. But overall, both German Jets and NG versions have really, really nice tail planes. The tail section for each one is excellent. I will notice a couple of differences. The NG1 appears to have a better point for the APU housing detail. As the Max has a very rounded APU housing area and the NG1 sells that nicely. One thing the Giant Jets 1 has is that the skid for the tail skid is a little bit better because it actually has a little point there near the front where the actual tail skid is. So the tail skid is a bump on the bottom side that protects the aircraft from impact when it comes in contact with the ground during rotation, either takeoff or landing. And then there's actually a little piece of metal that just sticks out towards the ground. That's called a tail skid. And the tail skid is a really, really important portion of the aircraft. The NG-1 doesn't really actually sew the actual piece of metal, whereas the Giant Jet 1 kind of does with that little bulge there near the bottom. It, it would actually be nice and realistic if NG added that detail. So that is another piece of feedback I would like them to take into consideration when they put this mold into production and when they make modifications. I would like to thank NG Models so much for giving me the opportunity to take a look at these molds and for putting their trust in me to do a good job of reviewing these and to give my honest thoughts on them. I really do thank them so much for sending these over my way and I'm very excited to see what molds they make and I'm very excited to see what models they make this year with the Max Mold. It will be an outstanding mold in my opinion with a lot of great selection. That is something that NG Models is going to have in their back pocket is the huge production that they make and the massive selection of Max Molds that they are guaranteed to produce. I'm really interested to see them make some more obscure ones like the Bonanza that they announced as well as the Flare Max 8 with both the green and white winglets. I'd really like to see them make the Lynx Max 8 the Air Canada Max 8, the WestJet Max 8 in both the old and current colors. I would like to see a Ryanair, Buzz, and Air Malta Max 8 200. I would probably buy all three of them for an airport that I'm walking on. And then just some other random Max 8s like a Fly Dubai Max 8 and a Fly Dubai Max 9. That'd be really exciting to see. Uh, Copa Max 9 would be great to see. They've had a couple of specials for those as well, so those would be nice as well. The Max 9 is not as prolific of an aircraft as the Max 8 is, but it would still be interesting to see them make a wide selection of both Max 8s and Max 9s. So that is it for this overview of the NG Models Boeing 737 Max. I'm really excited to see what it looks like in the production version and to get my hands on it, which I will be getting the production versions here very soon. So stay tuned for those. And hopefully y'all enjoyed this exclusive look at the NG Models Boeing 737 MAX coming to your collection very soon. With that being said, thank y'all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and God bless you.